everyone. Welcome to this channel. This video is on pile cap modeling using a finite element software called Vector2. So uh, for this example, we are going to model a pile cap with helical piles embedded in it. And this example is take, taken from a paper of Gunnar and Chilwal. So uh, this paper can be downloaded from a link from a uh, research group of uh, University of Toledo that can be found in registgroup.universityoftoledo. So we can click this link and in the publication, we can download the paper of Kuhner and Chilwal, which is number 21. So from this paper, we are going to model the first example of pile cap with helical piles embedded in it. And to model this uh, pile cap, we are going to use a software called Formwork Plus, which is a preprocessor of Vector2. And to visualize the result, we are going to use postprocessor called Augustus. In this example, uh, a strip of pile foundation is modeled using a 2D plane element and where the thickness of the plane will be 800 millimeter. So we are going to use as a strip model. So for, in the, uh, so for that, we open a Formwork Plus. Since I have already modeled the structure, so I will simply open the completed model. For a detailed modeling, Please uh, check our uh, YouTube videos for detailed modeling in Formwork Plus in the previous videos in this channel. So you can uh, learn about how to model with a detailed explanation on those videos. So in this video, a pile cap with helical piles are modeled. And uh, the hel so this is not only applicable for helical piles, the piles can be any concrete pile steel pile or other pile types. So the modeling process is very similar. And we will uh, define all the materials geometries based on uh, the paper we have, uh, we have shown earlier from this paper. So all the data are here, the tape, the length of the pile cap, the thickness, the enforcement percentage, and also the properties of uh, this elements, they are given here below, so you can check them for all the properties. You can see here the properties of concrete, helical piles, bracket plates, anchor bolts, and many more. So, so by using those properties, we can model our uh, pile cap with helical piles and the form of plus, we will apply the tensile loading as well on the anchor poles. Once the modeling is done, we will simply draw it using the VT, which is a vector. And once the run is completed, we will visualize our result using Augustus. So here we open our uh, finished model, which is completely drawn. And this display gives a general overview of our modeling. It gives total number of nodes in this model, total number of elements, total number of triangular elements, rectangular elements, also a concrete model, reinforcement model that has been used in this modeling. In the, in the uh, top bar in the menu, there are structure definition, definition two, which are the definition of nodes, elements, rebar information, cross-section views or information, the converse state, stiffness matrix, there are, and also the displacement uh, and the crack information, strain, stresses in the concrete and the rebar. So there's a lot of tools we can explore. So first we'll go structure definition. Here, all the structures are defined. So number one is, uh, this is a concrete material you can see here. The red one is concrete material, the blue one is a steel pile, the green one is a helical, the blue one is steel plate bracket, the green one is helical pile, the light green is anchor pole. And we can also check 
that installs strength value of its material. For concrete, it is only 1.5 megapascal. For steel plate, it is 346 megapascal. For pile, it is 553 megapascal. Uh, for the anchor, it is 725 megapascal. Also, the compressive strength values that we have input in Farmer Plus, we can also check them here as well. Since we don't have any transverse reinforcement, the smear steel's values are uh, not here or they are zero. Also, the thickness of the each strip or is uh, the element are here for the uh, the red one is a helical pulse. It has a 44 millimeter of thickness, and for the concrete, it is 800 millimeter thickness. So there's a lot of uh, information. So here it gives uh, element numbers because we have assigned mass in our members. So it gives element numbers, node numbers, restraint nodes. Here we can see which nodes are restrained. So here helical piles at the bottom, they are restrained. Also the truss tie, we can see uh, the top rebars, bottom rebars, which are assigned as a truss tie. Also, uh, we can check for the deformation crack. Since uh, we have applied the uplift load from here, we can check that as well. Uh, this is the reinforcement information, reinforcement area, reinforcement diameter, Young's modulus, and all ill strain, hard and strain, and all. So here we can see the this deformation curve of uh, the uh, deformation curve of pile calf when we apply tensile loading. So we can see deformed shape at each stages. So once it is ill, some members start to fail. So it fails at here. Also, we can see the crack, how the crack are, how cracks are developed. So at the beginning, there are no cracks with increase in our load stages the cracks are formed or they propagate throughout the structure and we can see that here the cracks are much pronounced compared to other places. In a combined view, we can see deformed shape as well as cracks at each load stages. So this is how we can see how the structure behaves during the applied load or the spile calf is uh, performing when tensile load is applied. So, and uh, this gives the strain, total strain. So at its load stages, we can see how strains are developed in those uh, members with increase in the loading. Also, there is a tensile stress. We can see how stresses are distributed from a nodal point where loads are applied to the supports. Also, the compressive stresses. We can see how stresses are distributed at each load. And also, we can check the stresses in the rebar since at the beginning, top rebars starts to yield because loads are applied on this location where there are ankles in upward direction. So top rebars first yield. And once the material fails, then bottom rebars also starts to yield. So this is how we can see uh, the stresses in rebar, stresses in concrete, net strain development, total strain, and also the deformation. And we can uh, plot this uh, deformation, load deformation curve in Excel, and we can compare it with the paper values. So we can simply view data and we can copy this data. Simply copy and we open our Excel file. I will remove the previous data. So I will plot it here. Since uh, we, we would like to see our chart in positive direction, I will simply multiply by minus and we will plot it here. 
So here, uh, this plot is from the paper. I would like to give a legend for that on the right. So I'd like to edit. This is actually a paper chart and this is the one we have extracted using uh, Vector2 software uh, from the Augustus as a post processor. Or we will just remove this one. We'll copy this first. Paste and also the deformation deformation here we'll pass it let's so still is these things and we will compare both chart in the same graph let's say this is factor 2 x axis is deformation and y axis is load this is tensile load I would like to change its color in blue. Now we can see here, the black one is from the paper. Uh, I'd like to show in the paper. Here we can see here, there's a paper, there is a chart, low deformation curve in the paper. And this is the one that we create from modeling of pile cap in factor 2. So uh, while comparing this chart, we can see that uh, initial stiffness, initial stiffness is uh, it quite matches with the paper's uh, data and also the ultimate load stiffness is also the same. So the ultimate load of the pile cap ultimate load i mean the tensile load capacity of the pile cap is 495 kilonewton from the paper and from our our modeling it is the maximum tensile loading capacity is 490 kilonewton so the error in this modeling is around 1.1 percent which might be from the discrepancy of uh, other missing data that occur in the modeling so here this is uh, this is what we get from the modeling and what is it in the paper so uh, this uh, quite matches to the paper the modeling we did so this is how we extract and visualize the results of our analysis in Augustus. Thank you so much everyone for this uh, watching this video. You can watch our previous videos for detailed modeling process. Thank you a lot.